Welcome to an exclusive Miami Film Festival recorded conversation. My name is Jay LaPlante and I am the executive director of the festival. And we are here today to talk about the short film, I Am Afraid to Forget Your Face from Egypt. It uh, made history earlier this year. Um, in, in actually several, several historical um, la uh, milestones, which is, first of all, is the very first film from Egypt to be invited to the short film competition at the Cannes Film Festival. And then it won the Palm d'Or, which is very exciting. So, uh, and the other part of history is that it's the thing that was awarded a palm, a palm door because of um, the historical circumstances. But we are joined today. Uh, you know, we lost Jay a little bit, but I guess I can introduce myself. Um, I'm Isabella Dos Santos, and I participated in, well, I participated this year in Miami Film Festival Curator Mentorship Program, which was a partnership with National Young Arts Foundation, of which I'm an alumna in film. So I myself, I'm also an animator, artist, human. Um, so I got a chance to review some films and, and it included, I am afraid to forget your face, which was one of the ones that I absolutely fell in love with and, and wholeheartedly recommended. Um, and I'm really, really glad it was selected and that, and that more people get to watch it. Um, I've been, I was like waiting this all like over the months since we did the selections, just like hoping that I could genuinely recommend to people to, to watch the film as opposed to just telling them that I watched an excellent film. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I think this one was the one, it was the first one that I watched and I began my notes when I was submitting my review to, to Jay saying that I just want to give the film a hug at the end. Um, and obviously partly it's because you ended it on that heartbreaking final shot, but also because I just felt such inexpressible human authentic feelings through it and and i just really commend you for that for creating this film that's simple in so many ways but um allowed space as a viewer to to just feel it with the ultimate depth of my emotion that at the end i just i just didn't even have words i just wanted to hug it um, so thank you for joining us for this conversation i'm not sure if jay will will come back um, but I'll start with some questions because I've been really excited to speak with you. Yeah, sure. I would like at the beginning to thank you, Isabel, and the Miami Film Festival for inviting my film. It's a really big pleasure that you're doing all this effort during this hard time. Really, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, I think I know Jay wanted, was curious about this as well, so I definitely want to ask you about the dialogue in the film or lack thereof. Um, I think it was like a really, that was one of the aspects of simplicity with the film. So what was your process in creating the script for it and deciding to, to keep it um, very simple with the dialogue and have it be more about the, the journey and the, the actions? So I was thinking a lot about the, the character journey and the secret that he has inside of him. That was very important for me as an audience to observe to not make any judgment from the beginning, to just observe, take distance and just look at it without trying to put any, uh, any big uh, words in the mouth of the characters. I wanted you to just live it without any judgment, without anything, and you just go with it, go with the feeling of it. And it was very important for me, this secret to be discovered uh, silently. Even the sound, I was working a lot to keep the viewer almost that there is no sound, some moments that you just observe and feel the character from how he's feeling. And uh, yeah, that's why I took this direction of just having minimal to, to uh, push this idea of having a secret and not wanting to reveal it to, and the audience yeah. just finding out in the middle of the story. I love that. And I, I described it as, um, I feel like you described the the emotion by showing the like the negative space of that emotion because you show the entire experience around the character. But it, it it's almost like um, this is maybe a bad comparison, but like playing a video game where because the character was shrouded, I I felt so alone watching it, and I realized that I couldn't rely on seeing a character have feelings and being you know and thinking oh that's the experience of the film, but rather I was in it. And I, it 
I was like, wait, what do, what do I feel about this? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, video games is uh, one of the big things in my life as an inspiration in, in terms of storytelling and so on. So it's, uh, it's good to hear that. <laughs> That's funny. Well, that's funny to hear that then, that there is that uh, alignment. <laughs> yeah, 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 there is. Um, I think one of the other things that really stuck out to me a lot was, um, and I was curious if this is something that went into your process, was the motif of black as as a color and as an experience. I think between the the opening of starting on just the black and hearing the voice, I think that was just such an intimate moment because I think there's nothing like that and just being in the dark with the voice of a loved one. Mm -hmm. And then the fact that the clothing itself is black. Um, did you see any kind of connection between the two? Yeah, yeah actually, like uh, uh, the reason that I started the movie on black while uh, you're hearing this conversation, I'm trying all the time to go with that approach to make the viewer uh, as much as possible to participate in what's happening, to not just lie back and get all the things jumping here and there. I want the viewer to imagine with me, like this was the beginning of the story and I want him to start to go into the journey with his own imagination. So it was very important to just hear it through the sound and then little by little you're discovering the things and also you are building your own story constantly and then you change it so it's more an entertaining um, experience and also more rich because you make your own story in some points you everyone made his own story while he's getting dressed i ask people what you think he's going to and everyone has his own point of view so the two colors that was also very important for me in the movie black of course because uh, it's the color that he's going to dress and also the color of death and the sadness and all this and the color of white as well that the girl is leaving in this white clothes and uh, the ending shot uh, while we're seeing this white light that is coming uh, from a car and it was like a beautiful moment for me even on the set because i didn't plan that moment it came to me from the first time and it was a perfect moment of connection between black and white and of course the world of green because i like green color so much yeah that's wonderful um yeah. it's it's such a i don't want to say relief but yeah i guess to, to hear you talk about how intentional you were about creating that experience for the viewer of of filling in the blanks and and really going through the experience because because that was such a a moving sorry a moving and um yeah, unforgettable aspect of, of watching the film. Um, I also, I wanted to ask about masculinity and the representation of that in your film. And, and what was the, um, yeah, what was your process in developing the story also with this young male lead going through such an emotional experience? Yeah, I honestly like that question. Uh, no one asked me this question before, but it's one of the things that I really, uh, think about a lot while I'm doing my work about the role of masculinity and um, uh, on TV or in movies or, and all these things. And I feel always where like uh, most of the time, not always, I'm missing to see the sensitive parts of the, the, the male. So it was very important for me to discover this uh, sensibility and the feelings and uh, and uh, the like the hidden emotions like to see a guy that he's crying in the street on his own and all these things was very important for me and all these images i really it inspired me and i really want to discover more this part of the, the male that it's i feel it's a bit forgotten because we see always the male as a representation of strong and savior and all these things and i feel there is a missing part that interests me maybe much more yeah, I agree. And, and I think also because it, it is so rare, there's still such a, a depth of emotion there because it, contra it contradicts so much of what we currently understand of the world that it almost means so much more to see a young man or someone who identifies as a man going through these feelings. Yeah, um, yeah I'm glad about that. And then I, I was also curious um, in terms of your 
or the the presence of of Egypt itself. And and I know that you've lived in a lot of other places as well and studied in other countries. And so what did it mean to you to create this film in Egypt? Yeah. And because it is it feels really sentimental in that way. Yeah, I actually lived my first 25 years in Cairo. Like I didn't even travel that much from Cairo. I didn't even travel outside of Egypt. So I was very connected to the Egyptian uh, culture. And the first love is, of course, an Egyptian love. And like the whole world is, was for me only Egypt. And when I started to go to other places, the stories even start to, I start to reflect a lot on, on things about the past, especially I, after I became 30, I start to think a lot about going to a different stage of life. And so reflecting a lot on the past while, uh, while still doing something that is connected to my feeling nowadays. So, yeah. Yeah. I, that was something that resonated for me as well, because I, so I was born in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Um, and I was, I was much younger when I moved out, but it, it had that feeling to me of being back home in my grandma's apartment, mm. going through all these emotions of this, of the world that you've lived outside of the protection of your parents or of your family yeah. home and, and both the comfort and the alienation of, of like the wallpaper and the furniture that's there. Um, and, and I think with that sentimentality, also the, the fact that you chose the four, three aspect ratio, I think added to that feeling of it being a memory, almost like a personal memory. Yeah. Um, I think I, I watched an interview of you talking a little bit about the aspect ratio, but I wanted to hear you talk about it a little more because I know that there were a couple different factors. Yeah, actually, like uh, the ratio, I chose it for the reason that I wanted to always to feel the, char the main character of the story, that he's always surrounded by lots of people and he's always stuck and he's afraid to get caught. So it was very important for me to see him in the bus and also during the big scene when he goes to the place. Uh, of his girlfriend so to see him always uh, in a small frame so he gets like uh, stuck between them the other reason is more of a production reason because when the frame is smaller you can put less people because when it's wider frame i had to put more people so it was saving some money i think so this was the two reasons i did that and i really enjoyed it and also there is another reason but i don't really talk about well, now that you mentioned, I think lately, lately, cinema, uh, TV took a lot from cinema. You know, like it took from them the camera movement, took from them the framing, and I'm not against that. But I start to feel like cinema could go to the old language of TV that could also create something new for the viewer, so he experienced something different when he, he go to the cinema. So it's somehow, this is also one of the reasons, but I have it uh, most of the time and while, while I'm working on a new story. Yeah, I agree with you. For me, it's frame rate. I think yeah. I, lo I love staying with the 24. There's something so, yeah. um, and especially as an animator, because I understand the, the psychology of frame rates, mm -hmm. the less frames you have, the more the viewer's brain has to work. And it, mm -hmm. to me, there's actually a big connection to, to how you created this film of, of of leaving all these empty spaces where where the human has to put themselves into the film in order to get the full experience, and I think I think it definitely shows. Uh, so your values in cinema definitely show in the in. I'm afraid to forget your fate. I'm happy to. Um, I think we got a warning about having a couple minutes left, so um, I guess I'll finish on asking, "What's next? What are you working on?" or what are you experiencing right now? Yeah, I'm actually working on uh, uh, one, my first feature film, but still in, it's in the writing process and I'm going next week in a residency in Paris to proceed writing the, the story. And the other thing that I'm doing, my first short animation film. So okay. we'll see how it will be. I'm really looking forward to that. Oh, amazing. Are you um, animating it yourself or you're directing? No, no, I'm still like, I'm still in the process because I will find a collaborator to do that uh, story that uh, it's a personal story that I wrote a long time ago. It's taking place in the 60s, so I needed to make it an animation. It's very important. 
Yes. Oh, I love that. That's exciting to hear. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share? No, I would like only to thank you for uh, inviting me and uh, talking to me about the film. It's really a big pleasure. And uh, one day I will be in my film festival, hopefully. Thank you so much. It's, it's such a pleasure to get to talk to you after um, the, just the deep experience I had with your film. Um, and I, I thank Miami Film Festival as well for being able to showcase this work. Um, and, and thank you all for watching. <laughs>